it's Laura Dickinson from the Keep It Running podcast. Today we are joined by Oklahoma State University athlete Ryan Smeaton. He holds an impressive 3K steeplechase PB of 827 and has also represented Canada recently at the 2019 World University Games as well as the 2019 World Track and Field Championships. Hey. What's up? Not too much. I just finished my quarantine here. Oh, nice. Nice. Back for the break, I guess. Yeah, back for the holiday. What about you? Are you back home? I'm staying in Oklahoma for the break. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so not bad. Weather's a little nicer here, so it's a little easier to uh, get running done and not have to worry about two feet of snow every time I wake up in the morning. Yeah, exactly. What, what was the temperature there today? Uh, it's getting a little cooler, but like, I think yesterday was like maybe, well, I don't know what it is in Celsius actually anymore. Like <laughs> 70 Fahrenheit. I think it's like wow. 20 Celsius. So shorts and t-shirts. Converted to US temperature. Yeah, I kind of hate it, but <laughs> yeah, it's well, the language. <laughs> wow. <laughs> cool. Well, do you want to do a little introduction and kind of say a background of how you started in running? Yeah, so um, I'm Ryan Smeaton, I guess, to start off. I go to Oklahoma State University now. I run uh, cross country and mainly steeplechase on the track. Um, I got into running at a pretty early age. I think I I played soccer when I was really, really young and wanted to quit that. But my mom said, uh, she was like, you can't just sit around and do nothing. So she had me join like a, a local track club. And then I just really liked the coach. I really liked the other guys on the team. And I think those were kind of the things at a young age, I think I was maybe in like sixth grade that got me to stick to track. Cause I mean, I'm sure as most people know, it's not always super fun and inviting when it's just kind of suffering sometimes. So I think that just kind of kept me through to the point where I could recognize other goals I could, uh, Oh, my boy Eric Lutz here asking Terry Crook. Big shout out Terry Crook. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think I just got to the point where I could recognize, I, I could start seeing the path down the road to attending university and running, and then also realizing other goals that um, I could form and hopefully achieve. So that was that was kind of my start. Did you know pretty early on that you wanted to go um, to the U.S. to run for college? Um, no, it actually wasn't something I totally thought of until maybe 11th grade or definitely into 12th grade once U.S. schools can start recruiting you. So, yeah, um, yeah I really hadn't thought about it too much. And e even for U.S. schools, I was only – my only visits were – uh, Tulsa, which is also in Oklahoma, and then um, yeah. Oklahoma State. So I, I visited, I think, Windsor in Canada and kind of did like a half visit to Guelph. And then being from Calgary, I knew the University of Calgary guys pretty well. But that was kind of it for me for high school recruitment. <laughs> What's a half visit? <laughs> uh, I was traveling with Stefan Daniel, and he was in – his senior year of high school. And so they really wanted him to go to Guelph and we were there together. So I kind of just like tagged on and then they're like, oh, you're a class below. So when the time comes and we can kind of start recruiting you, we'll do that too. Okay, nice, nice. <laughs> uh, what, so what were some of the factors that went into uh, choosing OSU? Um, one of the big things, I mean, kind of have all, all the things that everyone goes after, but um, kind of like it, it was a big power five school, especially coming from Canada, where university sports are a little, I mean, compared to the U.S., it's like not even close to the same level. But um, so I, I think coming here and seeing the school and seeing uh, the money in the program and like the opportunities that that could afford athletes was really enticing to me. Uh, the head coach here, um, Dave Smith knew he's, he's been a coach in the NCAA for a long time. I think he's only ever been the head coach at OSU. Uh, he knew a lot of people and kind of 
said, even um, like if you're, if I think you're going to run a good race, I can pull strings and get you into a better section or uh, a faster heat. And I think that's something that really appealed to me coming from Canada where the competition wasn't always that great at the high school level. Um, just being kind of like sparsely populated with really good runners compared to the U S so uh, that's definitely something that I look for. And then, yeah, just the, kind of the straightforward things. I like the coaches, uh, the other guys on the team are really cool. Nice. They just seem to like get on well at practice and it wasn't, it was, it was kind of like a, a, a joking atmosphere, but they were focused when it came time to do the work. So I really like that. Awesome. Uh, Chloe's wondering what your favorite thing about Oklahoma is. Oh, um, for me, I'm kind of in small town, Oklahoma. I think like, Stillwater's 50,000 permanent residents, maybe. And then 20 to 25,000 people come kind of seasonally with the school year. Uh, the thing there for me is like coming from Calgary, which is a big city is uh, I, I really like the small town. Like it's nice to kind of be able to, you can run three miles in any direction and you're out of town and kind of on dirt roads. So it's great for running. Um, I think other than that, it's just like, it's warm compared to Calgary. But I think that's definitely my, my biggest uh, thing I like about Oklahoma is it, it's kind of nice being small town. The people are nice too. You kind of get like the, a, a little bit of the southern charm so I love it yeah that's what I love being in New Brunswick all the the running trails and never having to stop at stoplights when you're <laughs> out on your run yeah, exactly it's not just sidewalks the whole time yeah I remember going to Boston like our first year for indoors and we had to do like I don't know 30 minutes shake out the day before and it was like I was so frustrated that every two minutes we had to stop for like cross the road or wait for a stoplight yeah weaving in and out of people on the sidewalk yeah. <laughs> definitely uh so 2019 was a pretty it seemed like a pretty breakthrough season for you do you want to talk a little bit about like how you think that happened what factors went into it uh, yeah, so that was a pretty interesting season for me. So the cross country season of that academic year, so cross country 2018, was probably I was so so the year before the outdoor season of 2018, I broke my foot, just running at practice really weird. And then the following cross country season um, of 2018 was probably the worst season I've had at OSU. Like I just struggled through workouts, races, regular runs, pretty much just wasn't fit and tried to catch up too fast. And then went home for Christmas break and just kind of went back to, I want to say went back to the basics. Like I didn't really try and do anything amazing. I just focused on kind of the little things like the nutrition and getting enough sleep and really trying to listen to my body to see if like, am I, tired because I did a 10 mile run today or am I tired because I've been doing too much in general and it's going to put me in a hole and then I think that just kind of built up through the indoor season and then onto the outdoor season where it really just started to like I uh, really started to see like the results of all that diligence and and not necessarily hard work but consistent work I think I didn't really have a lot of workouts that season that were A's but I had a ton of B's and I had no C's like I think it was just that consistency and what I tried to do in every aspect of my daily life the consistency there that really helped me shine through in the end yeah no that makes sense I feel like a lot of people are sort of in your situation where you're injured and then you kind of see where your teammates are and where you were before and try to do all these things to like come back to where you were quickly but you really just can't like rush the process and just have, having consistency is super important yeah absolutely I think that's I think a lot of people get caught up in doing one or two good workouts and thinking that's going to be like they're going to be unreal now or in even the other way around and I, I've fallen victim to both I think the other way around saying like oh you know I had two weeks of great training and I just 
I couldn't finish that last workout. So I'm going to be super bad now. So yeah, I think it's just like, as cliche as it is, but focusing on the long game. And, uh, <laughs> Eric says you're very wise. Yeah, I know. Eric's trying to mess with me <laughs> out here, but nothing will get to a wise man like me. Uh, that being said, have you, do you want to talk about either a really good or a really bad race experience? Yeah, so I, I guess I'll start with a really good race experience. I think kind of the one that put me on the map was Peyton Jordan. Um, that was the turning point of my, I don't know if I'd say the turning point of my career or the start of my career, because I really hadn't done anything significant before that. But, um, and that's one of those races actually there. I was in the slower section of that steeplechase and then maybe eight hours before the race, I got a text from my head coach and he was like, moved up. And I, was like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that means. And he was like, you're in the fast section now. Like, All right, thanks. <laughs> so um, yeah, that definitely one of my best race experiences. It's still my personal best to this day. And uh, I think having a good race and being in Palo Alto on someone else's dime just makes for all around fun trip. It's a great memory. And then I think in terms of uh, bad races, um, I've had my fair share of those too, but the cross season before 2018 at the regional meet, I th yeah, our, our regional meet, we had our number three runner, I think, or n number four runner. He fell really early in, got spiked bad. And I'd kind of been thrown into the race. Like if you do well, you'll probably do pretty well, but we're not expecting much from you. Like if I did, bad I don't think anyone would have been surprised and it ended up being me having to pass like four or five people in the last K to get the team to be fourth place at the region and qualifying on points to nationals and I remember just running through mud and snow like hating myself <laughs> and thinking I'm gonna let down the team and we're not gonna make it to nationals and like, this is going to be the end of the season. And like, I'm not supposed to be here. This someone else is supposed to be already finished ahead of me. But I don't know. I think that's one thing I look back on and say like, oh, like it kind of the thought of the team relying on me really pushed me to finish that race. But, but it sucked. So <laughs> it sucked, but you pulled through in the end. It sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. We made it. We are <laughs> fourth in the region and I think pushed in Tulsa because we had points on a couple other teams who also had not so great days at their regional meets. Very nice. That's another good question. Have you ever fallen either in a steeplechase race or a cross race? Uh, I don't think I've fallen in a cross race. I know a couple steeplechases in the regional meet in 2019 in Sacramento. I've landed in the water jump with maybe I should be like about 550 meters to go and I didn't hit the barrier but I just slipped in the water something it wasn't that bad I just I like really got my heart going and like had all my coaches on uh, their toes but I ended up qualifying still so it wasn't easy to forget about kind of and then another time I fell was at Pan Am's with 300 meters to go there's a barrier right there and I just hit my knee on it and went down hard and oh, was like that that was like a real hit where <laughs> I think I almost fell over every other barrier after that because I was like I got up and sprinted as hard as I could and was just so like shaking and out of energy adrenaline going but then also you know 27 2800 meters into a race so pretty tired and luckily I could finish and didn't yeah. get hurt more but yeah no definitely I feel like that last lap your legs are just so <laughs> dead you're just trying to trying to do whatever you can to get to the finish line yeah yeah that one I think about a good bit though because I think like well like me if I hadn't fallen like I would have got a medal or right like run a faster time but I guess kind of staying on your feet part of it 
<laughs> yes, it's basically. a little part of it. <laughs> Um, so what made you decide to try steeplechase? Um, so in high school, I think, I guess mm, probably mostly Canadians listening to this, but the Legion meet, like I'd always tried to qualify for the provincial, like the Alberta provincial team so they could take me to the Legion meet and the kind of the easiest way to get on, like the weakest, softest standard was always the steeplechase. So I'd always <laughs> have like one or two shots at that. And then one year I made it in the steeplechase and then they just put me in other events because no one else was in them. So I was like, oh, I'll just keep doing this. Like I'll just run a like mediocre time in the steeplechase and I don't have to run fast times in these other events and I'll get to do them anyways. <laughs> and then when I got to school here, the outdoor season kind of rolled around and they were like, what do you like? You ran steeplechase in high school. You weren't that bad. Like, you want to try that again? And I was like, all right. And started doing the drills with um, actually one of the, the old head coach who I think retired in maybe like 2000 uh, is still a volunteer coach here. So he's like 80 years old now. And he would just like yell at me going over hurdles and like just whip me in the shape real quick. So I kind of like just like the banter, like kind of the old school coaching I got from him. And then, I ended up being pretty good at it, so stuck with it. That's awesome. Your start at Legion Nationals. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, Trying definitely... to Nationals. <laughs> I think I did the 1500 steeplechase at Legion Nationals. No water or anything, just straight 1500 meter with barriers. <laughs> I, think, I think they only took me when I was already a youth, so it was 2K. And that okay. one, I think, that one had the water jump, I think. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. One step so. up. <laughs> yeah. Little... Um, do you have any advice that you would give for current or incoming uh, student athletes? Um, I would definitely say, like, the consistency, I think, I found is the most important part. Like, no one thing you do one day is going to make you amazing. No one bad thing you do one day is going to make you terrible. So I think it's uh, kind of cliche like I said but you got to look at the big picture I think especially coming to the NCAA scene where there's so many kids who are just absolutely studs yeah Charlotte said to eat a lot of hummus I am got to cut back on that but uh <laughs> what I was saying back to the NCAA scene like there's so many kids who come in who are just unreal in high school and then as soon as they get here just absolute studs and it's easy to compare yourself against them and say oh like they're in my class and they run 356 in the mile and I run 405 like I'm just gonna suck forever but uh, you have those opportunities hopefully you have those opportunities down the road where the work you put in now can help you toe the line with those athletes you thought were way out of your league early on and then hopefully you can beat those athletes you thought were way out of your But I think in yeah. terms of advice, that's great. Yeah, I don't know what else I'd say. If you're looking at NCA schools, like definitely picture yourself there. Talk to the other athletes, like the coaches, but explore all your options. Awesome. Uh, we'll see really quick if anybody that's listening wants to answer any questions. They can do that now. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. If oh, okay. If not, we'll do a quick like rapid fire questions. Oh, do you, do you think, think it's time? <laughs> oh my god. Eric says, "Do you think it's time for your haircut?" Every time I think <laughs> about getting a haircut, I call Terry and I ask him, and he tells me no. So. <laughs> my best answer for him. Guess not then. Guess no. not. No haircuts. All right. Okay. So we're going to do quick rapid fire questions. Track or right. Track, hands down. Uh, TV or books? TV. Pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. 
Uh, scary movie or comedy? Uh, scary movie. Uh, country music or pop music? Um, pop music. I I just <laughs> not just not country. Not <laughs> anything but country. Yeah. Uh, okay. Any advice for someone trying to steeple for the first time? A year out of college. Okay, I would say go over some hurdles at, at practice. Like I, I would do if you even if you you can probably just Google like hurdle mobility or steeplechase mobility. And I would just start on doing those like two, three times a week. And that'll help you with all the flexibility and mobility and getting the technique down. And then you can move on to, you know, running over the hurdles and reps and practice and just building up to kind of a more realistic race scenario. I think someone else said steeplechase or 5k. For, I'm going to have to say steeplechase. I, I've never run a 5k either. So really um, you've never run a track 5k yeah i'm kind of trying to not run one because if <laughs> i run really bad people will be like this guy can only run the steeplechase but i you know I'm, i want to maintain that um potential for you know maybe i could be pretty good but i just never ran one before so I'm trying to hold on to that all right keep it keep it a mystery yeah exactly exactly <laughs> sounds good all right well thanks so much for coming on it was great catching up with you yeah, thanks for having me on. It's good to see you again. Hi, right, see you later. Yeah.